Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, last time we uh, implemented Hello World, um, which means which means we added string literals and uh, syscalls. And this time we want to make the programming language a bit more interesting by adding branching. So uh, I want to implement if statements right now um, and while statements afterwards. I might do that outside of the video because they're really similar. But what did it do to, um, to prepare this is I added some tests. For example, if true, this is a simple uh, if statement. You will have uh, true or false on the stack, on top of the stack, then an if statement, and then a code block. We already implemented code blocks, so there are tokens for the beginning and the end of a code block. So it should be quite straightforward. Um, I've also <laughs> I've also added uh, examples for assembly. So like, actually, the only things we want to add are like a, an if and an if end uh, operation. The if operation will uh, take the top of the stack we'll test it so the flags are set and then uh, uh, we'll jump over the code block over this code block if it's zero and zero means false so if it's false it will skip this code block and it will jump to wherever uh, the operation if end takes place okay so let's start by implementing this and then later on we will look at else and else if. Okay, so I think the first thing we need to do as usual is add the keyword. Yeah, so add the if keyword to the lexer. All right, so of course, that's only two characters. Okay, so that's the if token. What's next? We could test this, but this is too small of a, of a change to really test. So let's add the operation. So we've got if, uh, start of if block, let's call it that. And end, if end end of if block so those are the opcodes okay so if we encounter a keyword and its value is let's start with this and here okay if we encounter an if statement what we want to do first is have an uh, identifier which is if underscore which is practically this label so if underscore uh, if index let's do it like that okay so um, before I forget increment the if index and we want to add it here if index so I've done something similar before with strings so strings also get a label so there's a string index right here but it's in the generate code function and i just realized that this is actually the not the place for this because in generate code i actually want everything that's specific to a platform or an assembly uh, syntax things like that i don't want to keep track of indexes uh, or labels I, I, I so I'm gonna move this uh, to the parsing stage okay uh, so we've got an if index yeah okay and we will identifier we will pass the identifier as an argument to the as an operand to the if opcode but then what we want to do if we enter the code block we want to recursively enter in a new, well, how do you call it, level of uh, 
the parse method. So we want to do something like this for us token generator. And we want to exit this parse function whenever we encounter the end of a code block. So let's also add that. So if the token type is block end, then we want to return. And then um, we could use yield from Um, is this the way to go? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so then the code block is yielded, and then we can end the if end opcode. That closes uh, the whole structure of the if, if statement. Okay, so let's see. Let's add it to the code generator. Um, yeah, let's just add it to the to here. If it's if, we want to pop our rex, we want to test its value. Yeah, and then jump if zero. And that will be the label, so that's operand. Okay. And with if end, we just want to set the label. So um, like this operand. And we need a colon. So, so it will be uh, a label. So let's test that. Um, test if true. Okay. Unknown token type block start. What this means is that uh, the parser is started with a block start. Let's see. So. Here we encounter the if statement. Here, um, the if the token, the if token. Let's put the program here. We won't be needing that, hopefully. Uh, if true. Okay. So we're here. Then there's a token block start, and what we need. So we need to yield this and then enter a new parse. Oh yeah, okay. So um, block start type equals next token generator. And we want to make sure that the block start type is equal to token type block start. And if it's not true, we need to raise a syntax error. Oh, this is going great. Okay, syntax error with uh, expected uh, block start uh, code block. after uh, if keyword. Okay, maybe this will work then. Okay. So that, that looks good. Um, let's see, this is start of the if block. So here it's true. So this should be this jump should not occur and this should be executed and then this label does nothing and if it would be false then we would skip because this would be zero rx would be zero here and
then this block would be skipped. So this looks good. I think if we um, uh, if we put this in test that as um, and then compile it. It works, yay. Is this, why is it? That's really interesting. Oh, wait, the string length is way off. Okay. Yeah, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <coughs> Excuse me. This is uh, 10. This is three, four, five, six. Okay. Oh, that makes sense then. So let's compile it. It works, yay. Awesome. So if statements seem to work, now we want to add else, um, which is not much more complicated, but a bit more complicated. It's similar, so we add a keyword. Uh, let's first show what we expect in uh, in the assembly. Let's output it. So we still have our if op opcode and if end opcode, but we add a, an else opcode, which is just a jump, and an else end, which is just a label. So what happens? Well, what if this is false, like it is here? We pop false. We test it. And we jump because a false is zero, so we jump to if one, which is here. And in jumping to if one, we get into we enter the else code block. So that's when. So we skip the 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 jump that's here, and we enter the else code block. However, what if we have true on the stack? Then we pop that, we test it, and because it's true. We do not jump and we enter the if code block. And after the if code block uh, has occurred, we enter this opcode, the else opcode, which, which is a jump across the else code block to the else one label. So that's how we want to do that. So it's either this code block or that code block by adding this jump and this label. So let's Let's implement that. Yeah, I see this also has the same bug in it. This is even one less. Something like this. Okay. Probably false also. Also has it. Okay. So that's six. Uh, I'm sorry, it has to be five. Okay, so those are good. Okay. Um, as usual, let's add the keyword, the else keyword. Um, right along, right along with if else, which is four characters. So then we have the token, an else token, and we want to have the else and the else end upper end. Yeah, like that. So if block, else block. Okay, so we've got the opcodes, and let's then go to the if. Yeah, okay. Okay, so when do we encounter that? Um, if we check out if else, the, this one, after the code block. So um, we have to check if the next token is, a, is an else token. So, Let's call it the token type. 
So token type equals token type else. There should not be an else and token type. Oh, not the token type, the value. So we, yeah, we need to check the value, not the token type. Value All right, so if the value equals else That's what we're gonna implement now and otherwise it's just a normal if Okay, so there's the else then we want to yield The let's see Let's go back to the assembly. Okay. We want to yield the else upper, uh, upcode. And I think we have um, additional identifier, else identifier, but it will have the same, it will reuse the if index. So else identifier. All right, after the else, we'll have the if end opcode. And then the else code block, which is a copy of this. What a mess. I will clean this up later because this is really messy. But it should work. So um, let's change this syntax error. Expected code block after else keyword. Then we yield from that. And then we need to yield uh, the else end. All right. With the same identifier. Okay. I think we could just add it here. Of course, it's quite similar. What else is actually just a jump. Uh, yeah, just a jump to the upper end. And then we have else end which is just the label, which makes me think maybe we could combine these two into a label. Yeah, let's do that right away. Um, so label, if end label. Let's remove else and uh, label needs to be put here. Here. So if and and else and are combined right now. Okay. So let's test it. Um, I don't know if I missed something, but we'll see. Uh, Ada Pi. Okay, at least it compiles to something. Let's see if this is what we expect. One thing that's not really correct is this number. So the line number which is used is not the line number of the correct token. So I will add a to do fix line numbers because in theory this should just work okay um, test.asm it works which should be the output of a program that works 
right? Yeah. All right. So that looks good. So yeah, we've got uh, if statements. Um, I will extend this so that uh, else if is implemented and while loops are implemented, which are both uh, kind of similar, but they need a bit of refactoring. So anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, next time will be fun because we will implement functions. So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> okay, see you next time.